Welcome to StarCell. This is a desktop environment and visualization tool I've been working on for the past two years. In this video, I'll be going over some of the available commands and features. When you start the program, you'll be put into this empty white 3D space. You can move using WASD and EQ for up and down. You intentionally cannot tell where you are relative to anything else until you add something to the space. To pull up the action palette and enter a command, you can click the equal key and start typing. The layout should remind you of Notepad, but it's 3D. You can call many programming languages. You can see, there's running Haskell. Let's run a little bit of JavaScript. You can also run code with loops. So if I ran this Python program right here, which just loops over I and says, welcome to star cell a hundred times. Here's some C. And then here is some C++. And so with the local Python instance, you can just use Python as you normally would. So if I just type in Python print one plus one, it will print one plus one. You'll notice an autocomplete system that is pulling its commands from an included CSV file. Here I'm demonstrating Linux commands inside of Windows. So using CDMIX, you can add and edit your own custom functions in the included Python file. And so here I'm demonstrating how to use that 10 dimensional projective geometric algebra inside of Python, inside of StarCell. So that first element E underscore zero squares to zero, and then all the other elements those square to one. First I'm setting up some Pluker coordinates, and I can use this function Cartesian4D to P16GA to convert these four dimensional coordinates into the 16 dimensional projective geometric algebra space. Or if I'm using the 10 dimensional projective geometric algebra space, I import that instead in Python, it would use that. And the API is the same between both 10 and 16. And I think there's Python libraries like CReal. What it did was it let you generate arbitrarily many digits of precision of any number that you wanted. So say you wanted pi to a thousand digits, you could do that. Or the number two to a thousand digits, you could do that. It gave you this system for precisely working with real numbers. You can run system commands. If I say cmd ip config slash all, it will run that. Here I'm demonstrating a custom plot function I've added. This allows me to do 3D plotting inside a star cell. We can spawn a ray-marched volume. So you can see that we have trillions and trillions of spheres here being rendered. It's quite hard to see, but there are trillions and trillions of spheres inside this cube. So if I type in equal apps, it will spawn all the files that are on my desktop. So if I just hover over one of these and click it, it will actually open the associated file that's on my desktop. So these are like your desktop icons and this functionality will be expanded in the future. I also have this Chrome test object demonstrating that you can create these 3D app icons. So when I click this, it opens up Chrome. You can also load images either from the file system by typing in the path or by just typing in a website. You can also stream your windows into StarCell. So here I've streamed the alias functions.csv Excel window into StarCell. So you can see that my actions are mirrored over to StarCell. All you have to type is equal window and then the title of the window that you're interested in streaming. You can also create websites. So you can do equalwebgoogle.com. And you can use this website as, as you typically would. There you go. You can also spawn videos and audio. The audio will spawn a sphere. And when you click it, it plays the audio.
We can also create coordinate systems anywhere we want. So if I want to create like a basis here, I can do that. If you did something like equal basis 32 comma two, it would take 32 different dimensions and then spread them across two dimensions. So that looks something like this. And not very usefully, you can create like 16 dimensions um, in a three dimensional space. You can load GLTFs. So here's a duck. Okay. You can do non-uniform scaling. You can see it's an oblique duck. house plant there. The next command is earth, but you can use this to spawn a earth globe. So if you type in equal earth, you're going to get the Google Maps API. If you type in equal earth one, two, or three, you're going to get the cesium Bing imagery. If you type in equal basis earth, you're going to get the Arcgis earth, which is very far away right here. There is some 3D building data inside of these models. The next available command is universe. You can use this to get a simple view of our solar system. Spawning the Max-Q Space Flight Toolkit, and that's powered by NASA's SPICE Toolkit. This lets you bring in location data of our solar system and visualize those planets' orbits. You can also fast forward in time to see what is happening with those orbits. The save command lets you save a world with any name that you want. And then you can load that world back up using the load command. By holding Alt, you'll go into the free look mode. By scrolling, you can increase the distance of the camera from the player by a factor of two. And you can change this by adjusting the value selector. So if you want to adjust the camera's factor linearly, you can adjust the value selector to move into linear mode instead of this hyperbolic mode. Uh, also, if you're holding control while you're holding Alt, you can increase the size of the player. So you can see that I've made them smaller or bigger. And this is increasing by whatever um, operator you have set in your value selector. So if you're using addition operator, it will add to the character size. But if you're using the multiplication operator, it will multiply the character size. So right now we're multiplying it by two instead of adding two every time. You can use higher operators exponentiation to become even more hyperbolic. Another fun test object is the platform test object. And if you go into the code of the platform, you can actually adjust this to grow as large as you want or as small as you want. And so right now I'm holding down shift in order to decrease my speed or increase my speed. So every time I'm scrolling, I'm de decreasing or increasing my speed. You can see that the world is kind of jiggling and you can see that we're having some errors. This is all because of floating point rounding errors. As you move away from those really small distances, uh, the simulation will return. If you press down the mouse wheel, you can rotate your camera. We can also add the sun by typing in equal sun. Since so this adds that sun lighting into the scene. And then if you tip control L and you scroll down, you can actually reduce the lighting, intensity lighting. You can see that it looks a little bit closer to physically based rendering. You can also spawn yourself a human. And this human can, you can walk around as you normally would and look around. All of the camera controls are indexed by control ASDF. Um, you'll control either the aperture, the sensor size, the distance from the center, or the FOV. So if I do control D here, and then I scroll up, it's going to change the focal distance. And then if I change the sensor size to something slightly different, we can see that we have a built-in bokeh here. And so if I move closer to this cube here, it will hopefully come into range. You could also change the FOV. 
Axiomatically speaking, you shouldn't be leaving this white sphere at the center. However, you can. And if you do, the program will introduce a sort of dark mode to your text. So yeah, those are all the commands I have for you today. Um, I'll be adding a lot more in the future. So follow this channel to keep up to date on everything Starcell and have a great day.